The long-awaited battle to liberate Iraq's second largest city from the Islamic State group has begun. Mosul has been under IS control for more than two years. If successful, the operation will be the most significant blow yet to the militant group. But it comes with great risk for up to a million residents living in the city. After weeks of preparation, the campaign to capture the city of Mosul has finally begun. The Iraqi army has dropped thousands of leaflets warning of the impending campaign. Our tanks, artillery and Humvees are maintained and ready to engage with the enemy. God willing, we will expel ISIS from Mosul. US-led forces are supporting the Iraqi army, Kurdish fighters and Shiite militias. Troops have surrounded Mosul for weeks. IS militants are now outnumbered and outgunned. But with more than a million people living in Mosul, even military success could create a humanitarian catastrophe on the ground. This is an operation that cannot afford failure. In neighbouring Syria, forces loyal to President Assad continue the relentless campaign to capture Aleppo. Hundreds of people have been buried under the rubble since the latest ceasefire collapsed last month. Both Syria and Russia are accused of war crimes. It could stop tomorrow morning, tonight, if Russia and the Assad regime were to behave according to any norm or any standard of decency. In London, Britain and the US have held a new round of talks to stop the fighting through possible sanctions or other measures. Measures to bring those responsible for war crimes before the International Criminal Court. These things will eventually come to bite the perpetrators. But amid the constant carnage comes stories of amazing rescue. In Aleppo, a boy hangs precariously from a building after an aerial bombing. As rescue workers pull him to safety, the crowd below breaks into ecstatic cheers. For every life saved, dozens more are lost. Ann Barker, ABC News.